Hello, Leo. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Leo is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your tarot card reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It is totally free, doesn't cost you anything. If there's anything you would like me to pray over, or meditate upon, or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. Now remember, Leo, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And we start out with the fool. This, um, this is great. This is freedom. This is the idea that you, um, that you are everything that you need. You have everything that you need. And you are ready to transcend your kind of present difficulty. Okay. I feel like the fool is really this, um, it's this energy that's open for anything. It's almost like we're just, we're ready to take this big leap, we're ready for change. And Hopefully there's not too much else holding us back. Hopefully there's not too much else that we need to do before we can make that big move, right? Take that big leap. Uh, let's put this card into some context. There's always something. The fool can't just be the fool, right? It needs other cards around it. Um, oh, this is, oh, this is already looking good. Oh, look at that. Not only does the fool have all of this water energy, love, support, uh, I think you have a really good network of people with you. You have very quality people around you. Um, I think that you're very uh, sober, right? And I don't mean that in kind of a literal way, that you're not drinking or anything, but maybe that too. I mean, you have a sober heart. You have a heart that is very much um, knows what it wants, but is not, it's not under the spell of anything. Does that make sense? You're ready for adventure. You're ready to transcend your present circumstances, which I, I do think are the four of cups. This is the, the present situation that you're, you want to transcend, right? This is where you're, you're starting. And this is, this is the point from which we're going to take that big leap because this is, this is a good situation here. This is not bad at all. Um, this is kind of like you've reached a certain point it's stable and now you want more yeah and i don't know maybe this is romantic maybe it's career maybe it's creative maybe this is just a spiritual thing um but not only do we have this water energy but we've got the hanged man which is also water energy this is kind of the energy that is just surrendering to the flow of the universe surrendering to the inertia of what you are building what you are creating and we have the Knight of Pentacles here in the future position, which means that you are formulating your kind of finished product. You are formulating your dream, right? Uh, kind of long term. We've got the uh, interesting justice or adjustment card. We have a Six of Pentacles, a Four of Wands, and very cool. And we've got the death card at the end. I really, I love getting the death card at the end because it's kind of like we are, um, it feels to me like we're working in tandem with the universe. We are partners, co-creators um, with the universe. Yeah. And so we're following the course of change. When we see the we see the death card in front of us, right? In this position in the spread, the very final card, it's as if we are following that flow that we are witnessing the evolution and the change of ourselves, of the universe, of the situation, of the environment, and we are trying to adapt and flow to that. We're not trying to lead this and expect the universe to kind of get in line behind us, right? That we are observing what's going on and we are trying to harmonize with that rather than expecting that to harmonize with us. Yeah. And so this fool is really, really ready for a journey, ready for adventure. Um, let's select the mystery card. What are the chances this will be another fool card? Well, I guess the chances would be one in 78, but we'll see. We're going to select a random card here. 
and we're going to set it down right here. We're going to put Kevin, a.k.a. Mr. Bates, right there on top. We're not going to look at that card until the very end, so Leo, no peeking, all right? Um, that card will tie everything together, and it will give us the confirmation that we need, all right? If at any point during this tarot card reading you feel like you know what that card is, put your prediction down in the comments. Let's do it together. Let's make it a group exercise in intuition. Yeah. All right. Um, let's take a look around the room. <clears throat> We've got our four major arcana, Fool and Hanged Man. We've got um, the Justice card and, of course, the Death card. And both of these cards kind of I like how they kind of relate to each other a little bit um, because the fool is very active, right, out in the, in the universe, in the world, doing this dance, having this adventure, um, is seeking out always new and novel, transcendent peak experiences, right? Uh, the fool doesn't care if they're good or bad, doesn't care where it takes them, just wants, just has that, that sense, that wanderlust, you know, that sense of adventure. Whereas the hanged man is kind of going with the flow of the universe too, and just kind of taking what happens in stride, but is not actively striving for experience. Is kind of letting the experience flow through it, or is, you know, as we kind of say, just riding on that river, of experience. So it's it's similar energy, but one's more active, one is a little bit more kind of yielding and passive, right? And then when we talk about these two major arcana cards, the death card and the adjustment card, um, the it, it's almost in some way we're trying to make order out of chaos. We're trying to understand the flow of the universe, right? We're trying to use this kind of higher spiritual discernment of the this Libra kind of energy to understand this mysterious process of life. What is this thing? What is this transition that they call death or birth or any, whatever in between, you know? So the death card really represents that ultimate mystery in life, the fundamental force of the entire universe. It's present everywhere at all times. Um, it's that kind of grand unifying theory, right, of change. Um, and I think that that card is called death in order to really convey its import, you know, um, because it is that fundamental force. It is ubiquitous. And that's like the greatest mystery of life, right? And uh, here with this Libra energy, we're trying to make sense of it. We, it's, we're trying to make heads or tails of what the universe is up to. Um, we're trying to imp impose some sort of sort of rationality on something that is seems to us at least completely irrational, and maybe by nature it is. Um, but we can't really we can't really know that. So this is kind of just um, this is the chaos, and this is the order that we're trying to impose. Yeah, and this is us with the the justice card trying to figure out what is the best course of action, trying to weigh the options here. Right, trying to be discerning and say option A is great. It's like when you're at the optometrist, right? And it's okay, which which lens looks better? Number one, number two, number one, number two, two, one. And then you have to choose. Well, that's us here trying to choose which course of action is better for us. Number one, number two, number two, number one. But what we see with the fool and the hanged man is that it doesn't matter. Right? So there's we're trying to balance all of these forces in us, that force that really does want to have one option be a little bit better than the next, right? Um, and when we say better, it's just, it's kind of whatever is going to further your purpose or whatever is going to lead to an increase of harmony in your own life rather than disharmony, right? Or take us further away from our purpose. So the idea of which path is better is very relative. Yeah. Very subjective, very relative. But with the hanged man and the fool, they don't care about that. You know, they don't care. So they're approaching this greatest mystery of life in a very different way than the justice or adjustment card. All right. Uh, let's see. We've got a little bit of fire. Not too much fire at all, really. And it's kind of the fire that is really what we don't want, I guess. Right. It's in this position. And maybe we don't want to necessarily impose our idea of order. We don't want to impose our own system onto the universe, right? Because that limits us. That puts us in our own little narrow box um, of confinement of what we believe the universe is all about. No, we want to go outside the box. 
We're looking for that peak experience. We're looking for that transcendent life, you know. So we have some fire that we're trying to, you know, manage, I guess. We have an awful lot of water here. And even right here really is water. And I feel like this hanged man is really diving into the water. Diving in and accepting and really acknowledging. And it's kind of a trust fall with the universe that says, yes, this situation that you're in now is stable. But what we know about the fours is that it may feel like stability, but it's always a temporary stability. Four is not going to stay a four for very long. We've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, so the hanged man is really accepting that this situation, while good, is not going to last. Diving through that gets us to this infinite ocean of this nine of cups, right? And this is really, this is really your relationship with the universe that is all about the satisfaction, fulfillment, adding depth, right? Adding richness adding meaning, bliss, love, all of these things into your experience. But it's only by doing that kind of trust fall and going through this situation, going through your present circumstances, or we could say going above it, transcending it, going, you know, whatever you want to say. But in the illustration of the hanged man, it looks like they're diving right through this to get to this. Yeah. So this is whatever you're doing right now. And of course, we have a little bit of earth energy. We don't have any swords cards, but we do have considerable air when we think of the fool as being pure air. Um, and of course, the Libra energy here, this is some good air energy. Um, but what are your present circumstances? Well, <clears throat> I think you're always on the, the edge of a storm, really. I feel like there's always this, it feels anyway, in the, in the emotional world. It feels like there's always another shoe that's going to drop. There's always like a storm brewing on the horizon. You're always this, this far from, uh, from disorder, from chaos, you know, from disharmony, from kind of a bad day. Yeah. And so I think we're really, we're trying to, um, we're trying to change our relationship with the universe, with that greatest mystery of life. We're looking to really evolve our entire being, not just spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, creatively, all of it, right? We're trying to really move forward in this very kind of whole way. And um, to do that, we have to first realize that the situation we're in now, whatever it is, whoever you are, wherever you are, um, we can grow and evolve from this. And indeed, we have to. Sometimes we get sheltered in here and we think this is safe, it's quiet, it's, you know, I'm okay here. Um, it's, both, it's a temporary shelter, you know. It's not a permanent kind of way of, of, of being. This is kind of, this is limiting. Um, I think of someone who's in like a storm cellar or something, right? You go down in the storm cellar, but you don't make that your permanent residence, right? You, you come back up and you keep living your life uh, once that storm has passed. Well, what if the storm doesn't pass? What if, what if you look outside and you think the storm's always, always, always around? You're going to stay in that storm cellar, right? And this is what we have to dive through. This is what the hanged man has to accept as, um, you know, accept that this is what the energy is that's going on right now and dive right through this. Now, the Nine of Cups really is wish. This is your dream. This is, um, this is everything that you would wish or dream for for yourself. Um, physical satisfaction, richness, meaning. Mental, emotional, spiritual, creative. Every level of your being um, finding ways to fulfill its own will. Yeah. This is the dream that keeps on dreaming. This is the happiness that keeps on happening. This is really, uh, you know, a wish coming true. And I think you have that kind of aspiration in you. That's why this card is underneath the surface. You know what you want out of life. You know what it would feel like. You could imagine, let's say, you can dream what it feels like to have that kind of richness and happiness and bliss and love and fulfillment in your life. Nine of Cups. I mean, we've been talking about the Nine of Cups for almost two years now that I've been doing this channel. And almost every reading that we get the Nine of Cups, I say this is like the best card in the whole tarot pack. Because this is not just getting something that you like. 
It's not just the fulfillment of a desire. This is living a life that is, um, keyword, living the life that is fulfilling. It's not getting fulfillment. It's not an object that we attain. This is living a life that is full of meaning. It doesn't matter what you're doing, where you're doing it, but why and how and who you are that's doing it what your relationship. You could be doing the best, greatest job in the world, but if you don't have a good dynamic with yourself or with that work, you're not going to feel a nine of cups. You could get every desire you want fulfilled, but you're still not going to be happy if it's, if it's focused on that object and not on the experience of doing the thing that gets you the object, right? So we're really looking for this kind of... Um, experience with life yeah and i think this this card is saying that your your wish is coming true that you're understanding the process here we have the three of cups behind us you understand how to create a life like this the three of cups right it's three you know it's exponential um we start with this understanding we know we know what kind of feeling we want out of life and we understand what it means to get that. Now it's just a matter of us diving in and going for it. And manifesting that in, in such a way, not in the individual objects, but in those circumstances, in the environment that we can um, perform that function, right? So the Three of Cups behind us, this is really a good place to start. Because this tells me that you know, you know what you want, you know how you want, right? It's not about the the finished product. It's about the process. Now, that doesn't take away from the fact that we are manifesting our future. The Knight of Pentacles is that energy that realizes every thought, word, and deed, right now in the present moment, is creating who you will be, where you will be, and what you will be doing. Okay, so if you really want this to be success, if you really want fortune, and riches and wealth and this tremendous meaning of life. If you really want your best life, we've got to understand that every decision, every thought, every word, every deed right now is creating this future. So let's make those choices. And really, this is about the choices. Let's direct our fool energy and our hanged man energy uh, in a direction, in a way, uh, through these thoughts, words, and deeds that will give us the best chances of manifesting this best life that we want, okay? Now, I know I said it's not about the objects. I do feel like this is, um, this is a lot of physical success. So I'm not trying to say that, well, you're not gonna get any money, but you should be happy anyway. Uh, no, that's not what I mean. Um, I want you to have success. I want you to have money. I want you to have luxury and comfort. I want you to have abundance, right? Of physical things of food and, and money and fresh water and, you know, everything that you desire in life. I want you to have it. The, the Spirit wants you to have it. But the idea here is that you won't be happy unless you know what kind of relationship you want with that life. Because again, you could get everything you want. You could get all the money, all the food you want in life. But if we're not if we're not living the best life, if we're not feeling that bliss and that happiness um, in those activities, then all of the money in the world is not going to really make us happy, right? Um, there'll be those that might disagree with me. Um, but I, I think that there is something deeper that we're looking for here. Right. In a very simple way, yeah, this card is all about we have these wishes and these desires. The Knight of Pentacles is saying that everything we're doing right now is helping us create this future. So I do, I do feel like your wish is coming true. I feel like you're manifesting your, your fortune, right? But the cards here are saying that we have to understand the dynamic with this life if we're going to be happy in any kind of future. Yeah. And so the Fool... Uh, the Fool is really an energy that has no karma. It's a zero card, right? Nothing sticks to it. It doesn't matter what it does, where it goes, what interactions it has. It never is planting any seeds of karma. This is someone that has attained the highest trances of mystical attainment. 
where there are no seeds of karma, where your thoughts, words, and deeds do not create your future self, or where, what you're doing, and who you're doing it with, and who you are, and all that stuff. Because that's what the Knight of Pentacles is all about, right? Everything we do now is a seed of karma that will sprout and come to fruition later, you know? But the fool is not planting any seeds at all. But I kind of feel like we, we want to, you know? We want to create the, the right kind of karma, the right kind of seeds. Yeah. So the fool does need a little bit of direction. And that's why I'm very happy that we've got this pure fool energy. But then we've got, we've got the judgment. We've got the intention here with the Libra energy, right? The justice or adjustment card. And I say we go to the path of the serpent now. And, and as we do this, I'd like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. And it really does help out the channel. And I really do appreciate that. All right. The one thing about the fool is while it's not creating any seeds of karma on its own, people are going to project energy onto this. You know, so um, it, the fool is someone that really would come off as being inconsiderate, insincere, uh, doesn't take anything seriously. Um, and we, this is going to affect our dynamic with the universe. Right. As theoretically perfect as the fool is, in practice, in the horizontal world, see? In the horizontal world, we've got to create some sort of seeds of karma so that we, um, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's unavoidable, I guess, is what we're saying. Right? Down here on the horizontal, it's unavoidable to be always planting seeds of karma, even if you don't intend to, um, whatever the case may be. So let's make sure we're planting the right ones that is going to get us the future that we want, that fortune that we want to manifest, that life that we want to manifest, okay? But in a very spiritual way, we are transcending that idea of karma at, at all, right, altogether. Um, and so it's, we've got to kind of keep things on their own plane, right? Now, with the justice or adjustment energy, we are deciding in every moment which path is better, which decision, which thought, word, and deed is going to lead me to my goal, my manifestation, uh, or which one is most likely to be a kind of a, a positive, let's say, seed of karma. So we have to be discerning. We have to be judge, right? And, and kind of jury of our own process, of our own decisions, of our own actions and thoughts and all that stuff. So in every moment, everything that we, every impulse that we have, we think, mm, is this leading me to my goal or further away? Is this creating some good karma or some bad karma? Right? And yeah, we can't stop and have this conversation with ourselves or with spirit every second of every day, but, you know, we need to as often as we can so that we understand which direction we're going. Yeah. Um, the six of pentacles, this is in the environment. This is you achieving the fortune. You are manifesting, right, this fortune. And um, we have to remember that while this might be blindingly bright, right, look, at it just shines, it just radiates, it, it has this kind of allure to it. Um, this is not going to make you happy unless we have the proper relationship with the universe, with ourselves. Yeah, this could be all the money in the world, but if it's, if it's not your dream, if it's not your wish, if it's not adding meaning and fullness and richness to your life, then this is just, these, are, these pentacles are going to be empty. Empty pentacles, right? So we want to make sure that we fill these with that spiritual light, with this spiritual water, so that when we do achieve these, I think, very serious goals that you have, um... It won't just feel like worthless money, you know. This whole experience will be of the utmost value to you. Does that make sense? And we also have that four of wands, of course. And yeah, we don't want to impose our system on the universe. We don't want to be too closed in with what we kind of, with the way that we experience the world. 
this is in some ways this is the seeds of karma that are kind of um, coming to fruition and the cycle is complete that karmic cycle is complete um, that one seed of karma has run its course and now it's on to the next one and so we really have to be careful with this because this is kind of a, this is a wheel that keeps on turning right and uh, it is a four so it is kind of like another one of these ideas of stability but it's only a temporary stability right and so we can't go through life thinking well i've done a lot of good deeds therefore you know i'm going to expect some really good things in the future and then we're kind of done with it and we just wait you know um there's always there's always something that's working itself out in you in your life in your relationship with the universe with yourself etc um so there is that the idea of the the path having no end the cycle having no end right um, and this really does emphasize the temporary stability of things yeah something is completed but something's something else has already begun it's already started yeah so it's almost like every uh the completion of every kind of karmic cycle is itself a seed of karma that's going to have to be worked out. And really, it can you can boggle the mind trying to think about this stuff because it's just, it's infinite, it's exponential, it just gets bigger, it's, it's fractal, it's just kind of... Um, we can't try to figure it out too much. The best we can do is always try to do the right thing in every given moment. And the right thing, of course, is what is going to give you the best karma, right? Lead you closer to your goal, right? Uh, add more richness and meaning to your life those decisions that are going to um, alleviate suffering for yourself for others your loved ones right i think we know what the right decisions are usually uh, we don't always make the right choices but we we kind of know what they are most of the time right and then finally we've got this death card at the end and this is evolution transformation. This is the idea that it's through working out all of these karmic seeds over and over and over again that we continue to evolve spiritually. And um, what I'm kind of seeing like physically is that we are, we are achieving success. This is the good life. This is a really good day, the six of pentacles, right? This is you, you're getting that job, you're getting that money, you're, you're, um, you're satisfying that kind of dream this is a wish that comes true right but there's more there's an evolution of that it doesn't just stop there because once we get here that also activates the knight of pentacles the knight of pentacles is never asleep it's all eternally standing here looking at the future so if this is if this is a year from now well when we get there this card is still looking a year from now so it's a constant evolution. The path is never over. Yeah. So to me, this is um, this is the process by which you are manifesting this fortune, this rich, meaningful, valuable life that you want. Yeah. And of course, the death card is um, the constant evolution of this. The idea that this process is... It's always, we're always at every point on the map here. You know, we're always here. We're always toward the end. We're always kind of, you know, needing to do this hanged man work of the, just the kind of trusting in, um, trusting in the flow of the universe. And um, I think also with this, with this hanged man, I'm feeling like we've, we've got some things that we have to kind of give up on. You know, things that are not meant for us, things that are planting seeds of karma, but we really don't, we really don't want that, you know. So it might be something that, um, you know, kind of feels good in the moment, but in the long term, it's just kind of creating more, more knots for us to work out. It's creating more of these kind of four of wands that are, we're going to have to eventually like deal with, you know. Uh, let's look at the mystery card, though. Let's see what see what's going on here see what kevin's got for us aka mr bates uh i i want to see maybe nine or a ten of cups nine or a ten of pentacles or or the strength card your power card 
Right. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments. No, it's a Three of Wands. So now the Three of Wands, Three of Cups, right? You're understanding the process of change, the process of creation on the spiritual plane. You understand how your choices are creating future karma, future things for you to have to work out and deal with and things that are going to, you know, kind of um, re the results of which you're going to have to deal with eventually the consequences of which you're going to have to deal with eventually in ways that we can't really predict. This card is all about virtue. This is about doing the right thing, having the character and the integrity to always be doing the right thing. And that's a very subjective and very relative term. The right thing, right? And we've got to figure out what the right thing is in our own lives. In every moment, we've got to be the judge of what is right and what is wrong for us in the context of our experience. Yeah. This is a this is a an interesting confirmation card. Now we're going to do an extended reading as well if you want to stick around for that. Click on the link that is up here in the corner or there is one down in the video description. New readings for Leo every Tuesday and Saturday. I am here every day. Just come on back, see me tomorrow. Okay? If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It is totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Leave a comment for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.